The Photographer's Story is a series that I started during the first lockdown, just a little initiative to not only offer an opportunity for artists to share some of their stories and insights behind their work, but hopefully to also inspire the viewers to reflect on some of your images and that might perhaps guide some of your creative aspirations for next year, a year which hopefully will have a bit more freedom. Now, the format of asking guests to record themselves is really just to give that relaxed time for them to consider what they want to say and how they want to say it. You know, a bit like crafting an image in the field, it's a slow and considered approach to articulating a message. And I think it's a format that's worked quite well. I mean, I've certainly enjoyed all the contributions so far, so hopefully that will continue. Now, I was looking back at some old images just recently and I realized it's been over five years since I met my friend, Tom Heaton. Now, things have changed for us massively in that time. And although we're quite different in our approach to photography, we certainly both share a passion for experiences in nature. And I just love his approach of reveling in the adventure of nature, you know, grabbing opportunities with both hands, but equally quite content with the small and intimate scene too. So I've asked Tom to contribute towards this series, but I seem to have received a video from Shaggy in Scooby-Doo. Well, Simon, thank you for that incredibly kind and generous introduction. In all seriousness, Simon's got a great thing going on here where he invites photographers onto his channel to talk about their favorite images and the stories behind those images. I know he's had on Ben Horn, Adam Gibbs, Joe Cornish, all fantastic photographers with great images and really inspirational stories to tell. And it's such a good idea and I'm I'm really grateful for being asked on to talk about my own image and story behind that image. And I think having a good image or a good photograph is fine. You know, obviously that's, that's what we all aspire to, right? But if you can have the, or find an opportunity to tell the story behind that image, and that is such a powerful thing because it gives a good image or a great image context and allows the viewer to connect with the image on a much deeper level. And that's pretty much why I started YouTube in the first place was because it gave me an opportunity to share and tell the story behind the image. And it's just an incredibly powerful thing. So the photograph that I've chosen is this image. This is a photograph of a waterfall in Iceland, I believe. It's called Haifoss Waterfall, although my Icelandic pronunciations are not the best. Uh, but this was photographed on a workshop that I was leading in the summer of 2017, a camping workshop. And the reason I've chosen this image is because when you look at it, it's a great image. It's, it's a fantastic viewpoint. It's full of drama, mood and atmosphere. But what you don't get from looking at this image, what you don't get are the previous 12 hours and the events that led up to this photograph. So that's what I'm going to share with you today. So I mentioned that this was taken on one of my workshops. Actually, it was my first ever workshop. Now I'm a bit of a negative person in that if I, if I have to do something, you know, a big change in my life or a big decision, I'll usually make a list of pros and cons and more often than not, I focus on the cons and that'll stop me from moving forward and stop me from doing something. And that's exactly what happened when I was trying to make the decision as to whether or not I should start running workshops. Of course, on my list of cons were things like, what if I get sick? What if my flight gets canceled? What if I lose my bags? What if the weather is so bad you can't get outside and take photographs? So that put me off for a while. But eventually after speaking with my good friend Thor, who is a fantastic Icelandic photographer, and I'm sure Simon won't mind linking to his website in the description below, because I know that during these tough times of lockdown, a lot of us photographers are struggling, so I'm sure he'll appreciate the help. Um, so if you do want to go to Iceland, you know, when all this madness is over, Thor is your guy. But me and Thor have known each other for a long time, and he said, come on, come to Iceland, beautiful weather in the summer, fantastic, you know, landscapes. And I was like, yeah, okay, let's do it. So bit the bullet and put on a workshop and I wanted to do a camping workshop so we could access the highlands uh, so that's what we did and this uh, before this photograph was taken we had our little camp set up in Landmalaloiga <laughs> again another terrible pronunciation but Landmalaloiga is a is in the southern highlands of Iceland it's a fantastic volcanic area with Scenes that just look incredibly otherworldly. And I was so excited to be there camping and doing photography. 
And then we got the call that a storm was coming in. A storm was heading our way. And storms in Iceland during the summer, they're not that vicious, not like they are in the winter months. You know, they usually, you know, you get a bit of rain, bit of wind for a few hours and then they pass. But this storm, this particular storm was actually turned out to be one of the biggest summer storms in Icelandic history. It definitely holds some kind of record. And we got word that this storm was coming in. And the problem is, with it being a camping workshop, we had no accommodation. So we thought, okay, do we stay and just sort of hunker down and shelter from the storm and wait it out? Or do we pack away camp and go somewhere else? The problem is, you couldn't go anywhere else. This storm was so big and so violent, it was covering the entire southern half of Iceland. So we were trapped, basically. And then the warden came around and advised us all to pack up camp and leave the area. And upon noticing other parties packing away and leaving, we took the decision to pack away camp. Um, and that, you know, that was a big job, a couple of hours, because we had big communal tents where we would eat and chat and share stories and that kind of thing. Plus we had all of our individual tents. So we packed up the entire camp and we jumped into Thor's vehicle. Now Thor's vehicle is a very, very nice vehicle. It's a modified Mercedes Sprinter, four wheel drive, jacked up, big fat beefy tires, so you can go off road and access all of the goodness of Iceland. Very expensive vehicle, I might add. So we decided we would just put all our camping gear in the vehicle and we would just drive. And we would shelter in the vehicle until the storm passed, because I think it was only forecast to last about 12 hours. And that was the best option at the time. So that's what we did. We all piled into the vehicle and we set off aimlessly driving, looking for locations, looking for any opportunities to jump out and grab a shot. The problem was the winds were so vicious and violent, you could hardly get out of the vehicle because you would get blown to your feet or blown off your feet. It was that bad. But ever the photographer, I remember being overwhelmed by pure excitement when I saw an opportunity to take a photograph, a nice bit of light, some dramatic clouds and a beautiful landscape. So without even thinking, I told Thor to stop the vehicle and I wanted to jump out and take an image because the group in the back of the vehicle, they were suffering, they were bored. We hadn't taken any photographs and I really wanted to just get people excited for photography even though there was a storm going on. So I stupidly thought that I could jump out of the vehicle and grab an image and everyone else could jump out and grab a quick handheld shot and it'd be great. Of course, <laughs> I totally forgot about the violent winds. So I opened the passenger door and the winds just violently ripped it out of my hand, bent it back and snapped the hinges. The scream from Thor I'll never forget, it's burnt into my memory. He was not happy, he gave me a big angry scream and rightly so. I jumped out of the vehicle and I'm wrestling with the door and I couldn't close it. Not only were the hinges bent, but the wind wouldn't allow me to close it. So Thor came and he helped and we pushed the door closed, but it wouldn't shut. So I spent the next 12 hours sat in the passenger seat, holding onto the door because if I let go, it would have fallen off. So that was the first really negative experience in the hours leading up to this photograph. So right now I'm feeling pretty bad. I've got a van full of people or photographers who haven't taken an image. We're all cooped up in this van and it, the whole situation just felt hopeless. And then after, I don't know, maybe 10 hours of just aimless driving, the storm started to pass. The winds dropped, the rain eased off, so we decided to head for this waterfall, Hyfoss. Now, if anybody's ever been in a stormy situation, as a photographer, you'll know that the best lights, the best moments happen at the tail end of storms. You know, at the beginning of the storm or after the storm, just as it's moving out and you get fantastic light, cloud structures, and, you know, it's a really great time to be a photographer, but you've got to time it just right. So we went to this waterfall and the storm had passed and what you can see here is the, the tail end as the storm is subsiding. 
And this waterfall is phenomenal. I mean, it's beautiful. Look at it. It's just fantastic. And we had about, I think there was about 10 of us, miserable, like miserable, tired, cold, wet, achy, because we've been shoved in this vehicle for 12 hours without opportunities to do anything productive. 12 of us, or 10 of us, sorry. And when we got to this location, all of that was forgotten about. It was all forgotten about. Now, it was still windy, it was still raining a bit. And we all managed to set up our cameras and take this fantastic shot. And it was, it was one of those moments where it's, as soon as you press the shutter, you are just filled with elation. And nothing else mattered. Everything was worth it. If that was the only shot that you captured from an entire week in Iceland, it would have been worth it. And that's the power of photography. After we'd captured this scene here, as a group, we all went back to camp. Um, it must have been about two o'clock in the morning by this stage, and we all worked together and we rebuilt camp. And actually, what you could see around the camp where we built uh, was all the remnants of the tents that never decided to pack away. And it just goes to show how fearsome the storm was. And I specifically remember after we'd built up camp and we all had our cameras out in the big communal tent looking at our images on the back of the screen and seeing this was fantastic. And we broke out a bottle of whiskey and we're all wet, cold, tired, haven't slept, you know, truly miserable, but we weren't miserable. We all had this sense of achievement and accomplishment. Um, and I mean, this was like the only image that we captured from an entire sort of 14 hours of hardship but it was just totally worth it. And we all sat there and we all pretty much sat in silence with, uh, with a whiskey. But the sense of camaraderie and satisfaction that we all shared was just fantastic. So this image is a great example of hardship and, and then having you know, a hardship with a great outcome. And that's often the case in landscape photography. You know, you might have to hike many miles and endure terrible conditions. But if you just get that one moment, that one magical moment where you press the shutter and you know you've captured a great image, then it makes everything worthwhile. So that's my story and that's my image. Uh, thank you, Simon, again, for having me on. And I guess at this stage, I don't know how this works, I'm, I'm back to Simon. Ooh, I could just imagine how Tom felt with a big, angry Icelandic man called Thor glaring at him. <laughs> it's, it's a fantastic story and it resulted in a beautiful image that clearly means a lot to Tom. And that's the thing that I've probably learned after spending time with Tom over the years is just how important the experience of the great outdoors and that sense of adventure is in his work. You know, yes, it's very nice to create images which people enjoy, but we don't often get a sense of what the photographer has endured or enjoyed in the process of, of making that image. You know, we strive to create images which on their own are evocative and might invite the viewer to imagine the experiences that led up to that moment. But over the past six years, Tom has done a fantastic job through his YouTube channel of bring into life the, the hardships, the challenges, but also the moments of elation. And it's not just about entertainment, it's a peek into somebody's life. You know, what makes them tick? What gets them excited in photography? And it's those little uh, subtle snippets and insights that actually teach us the most about how a photograph came to be. And perhaps even more wonderful is that in the process of sharing that journey and the stories along the way, is that it's inspired thousands of other people to seek their own adventures in photography. That's it for this episode. Thank you very much to Tom for taking the time to share his story. Hope you enjoyed listening to that. Uh, just a quick plug for my newsletter. I'll pop a link in the description below so you can sign up to that just for early news of workshops, events, special offers on new prints, things like that. Um, but also please give this video a thumbs up, leave a comment below, your support is massively appreciated. But yeah, thank you very much for watching and I hope to see you next week. Mm -hmm.